It's still the breakfast and plus TV Africa. Andia Kotiva joins us this morning as we look at the consent of 10 Jack Reach, an oil executive that has appealed for admission of Nigeria into the G20 economic group. Now, Jack Reach made the appeal during the U.S. African Leaders Summit, which was held in Washington, D.C. Rich noted that the inclusion of Nigeria and African Union into the G20 would be a milestone in global economic acceleration. He urged Africans in diaspora to work towards achieving uh, this goal. Now, according to him, Africa would be a foster con with if Pacific and Caribbean countries, we're talking about 15 and 16 now, countries, uh, to the other end you have 15 and to the other end you have 16. Uh, are integrated into the continent. So we're going to be looking at about 85 uh, African countries, 85 plus all of that. Now, he, he said admitting African into the G20 would help the continent a lot and would go a long way uh, in ensuring its technological advancement, which is also apt. Niger is about 19.3% of Africa's total GDP, and that's a strong economy. This is some of the arguments that he's put out. But... Um, Akwotive, thank you so much for joining us, Andy. We do appreciate your time. Thank you so much for having me. Well, uh, Andy Akwotive is a social reformer uh, all the way, uh, or he's in the FCT. But let's get straight to it. W what do you make of, you know, the argument of uh, 10 reach, right? And when you juxtapose that with the fact that in 1999, the G20 was formed around economies that are critical to the world market in the sense that the criteria at the time is the importance of a particular economy to world's financial market. And in 1999, Nigeria was nowhere near that. Now, it's more like uh, the composition also of the G20, it's final, you know, it's just G20, can't be G21. So juxtaposing that with the argument of uh, uh, the expert, what do you make of this? So we are, we, we are merely chasing clouds in Nigeria and in Africa. We are failing to do the first things first. We are failing to do the foundation, uh, and we want to build a skyscraper. Uh, imagine, for instance, if you wanted to build a skyscraper, what kind of foundation you'd be digging? And this is what is particular about Ni Nigeria and Africans, and the way Nigerians speak. What exactly is the G20 supposed to represent? The G20 is a, is a group that um, you have membership of countries that indeed have proven themselves to be countries that you can reckon with everywhere in the world in terms of economy, in terms of politics, in terms of some other social, political considerations, right? But you see, we are not looking at fixing the first things. Nigeria, what do we produce in Nigeria? You know, I've had this argument severally. What are you taking to the G20? Should you be admitted into it now? Are you going to go get into it as a competing country or a competing country, you are going to get into it as a pariah. You are going to get into it as a country that would go there and be beggarly. In the community or the committee of nations that are going to be at this G20 that we are pushing to get into, according to Jack Christine, that, you know, his conversation is going to be another kind of conversation eventually. Now, according to that, when you get there, are you going to be a diner? or you are going to be the meal to be eaten. What is happening with Africa and with Nigeria is that we have failed to deploy the best of resources that we have got so that others can see us as a beautiful bride and want to come, you know, and lure us, and want to come and speak to us, and want to come and ask us to join. Because this is what you see everywhere else in the world. You know, countries will take time to develop themselves Nigerians and Africans, we are acting like that child that has not passed through primary school, but is interested in getting into university. Okay. So, but um, the, the question is, the G20 was formed not to have new members. I mean, it's G20, and that's what it is. Finality. 
um, that's one of the characteristics of the G20. So do you think that this is very apt, this argument, or should we be more so, concerned so about it, making ourselves economically viable without having to yeah, pitch so our tent? Re regardless of if it was G20, you know, uh, we have seen in the United Nations how that certain groupings that started, you know, started off um, having certain numbers uh, have increased over the period of time. And um, consistently, um, they have um, be began to open the borders for other member countries to join, right? Um, life generally is about change. And if you thought that if you had one African country that is as big as Nigeria, that has done so well economically, that is politically, strategically located to advance the course of the group. If you thought so, there's nothing wrong with making a G21. You know, um, the, what, what about G20? There's totally nothing wrong with making a G21 or G27 or G30, if you may. So what you see, what would make them admit you? There are sets of criteria. There are conditions, precedent to draw down, conditions that will make them admit you into, you know, this committee of nations. But what we ought to be doing before we get into that group, should we really want to get into that group? We have failed to do those things. That's my grouse. That's my, that's my pain. So we ought to fix the things first before, like a beautiful girl, like a bride. If you did not fix self, if you did not fix you, you had terrible body odor. If you did not fix self, you did not fix you, you had terrible um, um, uh, self-esteem. If you did not fix self, how do you think you would have suitors? How do you think you would have men who would look at you and say, oh, Oh, so, so, but um, Andy, if, Andy, Andy, if we go, if, if, if we, I understand where you're going to, but uh, that argument is not valid because uh, they say beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. So, you have a lot of people who have be be very Nobody perfect self-esteem. My, my, my point here is, if we go through that path, we probably might not get out of here because you have a lot of persons who have fantastic self-esteem, but that's not a requisite. And so they probably just end up bad and, you know, the other so person let me on the explain, other hand Let me explain badly. to you. For you to be able to get into a certain clique of people, for you to be able to get into a position where a certain category of men would ask you out, you have got to up your game. Trust me. Do you think a Prince Charles is going to come into Nigeria and just go pick it? All those things happen in Cinderella stories. He's just going to pick one girl who is not confident, a girl who is not a girl who is not <laughs> sure. I'm saying that the G20 is like a Prince Charles. I'm saying that the G20 is like that kind of... So when you say beauty is the hand of the uh, high of the beholder, it will mean that just one, pardon my use of the word, one regular boy will see one regular girl. Oh, you say it's beautiful. And he will say, okay, come, I want to be friends with you. But if you must get beyond the regular, beyond the ordinary, you want to get to the extraordinary, the exquisite, the selected few, you have got to prepare yourself for it. That's the point I'm making. So, so I want us to talk about... about Andy, let's talk about what Nigeria is not doing. What what's the criteria you have been you have mentioned this a couple of times? Nigeria. So what are the criteria that that we should have so we can be attractive to the G20? What exactly uh, should we have? Because the argument of uh, reach ten, uh, he said that Nigeria is at the center of trade right now. But because I know that in 1999 that might not be the case. But you know. But, but now he's saying that, yes, we are in Africa, we are the center of, you know, trade and what have you. If you also look at, you know, contribution to the GDP, especially in the continent, Nigeria is stopping the, the chart. So what's the reason? What criteria then is stopping us from being part of the G20? Okay, so a lot of people have questioned the GDP that does not affect the quality of life of the people. Look around the world and show me one country with a very, very high GDP, having the quality of life that you see in Nigeria. So, so some economists have said GDP alone is not enough to um, use as a yardstick for measuring the economies of the countries of the world, you know, that have crossed the path of poverty, um, they have become great. It's not a measure for that because your GDP is great and you're buying a bag of rice for 48,000 or 50,000. Your GDP is great and you cannot produce fuel for yourselves. Your GDP is great and you are importing petroleum products 
your GDP is great, you export crude, your GDP is great, and I can go on and on and on. I'm saying that our leaders have got to start thinking the ABCs. Common things they say occur commonly. And common things have capacity to make you get to the top. It's not the extraordinary things. It's the common things that you do extraordinarily that gets you to the top. The point exactly is that for us to become that beautiful bride, Nigeria must begin to think about producing, my sister. I have asked, the last time I was in a studio here in Abuja, I asked the journalists that, Show me one thing in this studio, one, including the cloth you are wearing, that was produced in Nigeria. One. Including the cloth you are wearing. Including the wristwatch you are wearing. Show me one. Point to one. How do you think you can become a beautiful bride when you have failed to do the things that you should do? You see, we are just doing wishful thinking, particularly coming from teen. Ten had always been, in my opinion, a wishful thinker, right? You know, it, and there's nothing wrong with, uh, you know, living in that bubble and being utopian, you know, being conceptual. There's nothing wrong with that. But you see, you have got to transform the concepts to reality. We were told that, you know, um, words are first living in our minds before they are brought out. They exist in concepts. Even God that we serve, you know. Andy, uh, Andy we have to go. But, be, but before we go, really, we've well, been prompted in less than a minute. He's also suggested that there should be a collaboration because we know that one of the criteria to be, I mean, part of the G20, you have to look at numerical strength. And so he's asking that there be a collaboration with uh, the Pacific and the Caribbean, you know, the diaspora, integrating with Africa um, so you have that numeric strength to be part and also, you know, the economic viability as well to be part of... Um, uh, the G20. Do you even see that as possible or rational? Okay, so I am, I am for everything and anything that is process, right? Um, like I use the illustration, if you thought that the process to get into the G20 is X, Y, Z, be strategic about achieving X, Y, Z, and automatically it will be a given that you'll be admitted. Why do we go to the universities? Why do we go to schools? Because somewhere in our mind, we believe that once we acquire education, it would allow us to live and lead a good life, right? So be strategic about prosecuting that. And for me, that is what I want to hear. And not all this wishful thinking. Oh, we want to get to G20. These are the criteria. We must set up a machinery, a system that can help us begin to achieve these things. If there is need for us to have collaborations, let's have collaborations. If there is need for us, you know, to revamp certain areas of our system that ordinarily today, you know, is dead and gone, please quickly start to revamp it until you do these things. You will just be existing in bubble and be living, you know, largely utopian life. Well, thank you so much, Andy Akotive, for being part of the show. Thank you for having me. Well, Andy Akotive is a social reformer in the FCT, and we appreciate his thoughts, but we have to go at this point in time. Uh, we hope that we put our acts together, and so we become very attractive as a bride, you know, to the groom. <laughs> I like that illustration. But if you missed out on any part of the conversation, it's fine to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, who at Plus TV Africa, and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. My name is Messi Bopo. We join the newsroom at 9 o'clock for the news brief. Do have a Merry Christmas.